Grace, peace, and mercy be with you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Charlie, for serving as our reader this morning and for Bill sharing his stories and experiences on the marathon in Phoenix last week. People of Community of Joy, you know that I love maps, paper maps, to unfold and to look closely. I like studying them. I like the names of towns and rivers and byways. It makes a road trip really enjoyable and fun to study while Susan is driving, to study the map and to look closely as we're crossing from Indiana into another state. And I always say then, please stop at the next visitor center. I want to pick up a map. But you already have the state's map twice. I heard on our recent road trip, but I want a third map, an updated map. <laughs> this morning's reading from the Gospel of Matthew has a lot of geographical references to areas in Israel, and of course that caught my interest. There are no less than nine mentions of various locations. Matthew, it sounds, certainly had a knack for geography and maps. I say this because what Matthew says here, and he goes back to the prophet Isaiah, quoting what Isaiah in the, cha in the ninth chapter had talked about. Geography matters. Geography communicates much more, of course, than location, however important location is. But geography also brings back memories and highlights events to come as we see in the interplay between the prophecy of Isaiah and Matthew. The geography that Matthew lays out brings back to me beautiful and personal memories of my sabbatical last summer in Israel and especially in the area that is mentioned in this morning's reading. So you heard about Nazareth and Capernaum and Lake Galilee and the Jordan River. And these are all areas around that Benedictine monastery called Tapka, right there on Lake Galilee, where I stayed for an extended time with the eight brothers of the monastery. Geography matters. It matters because geography also communicates much more than location. It also sets forth in motion events to come, just like Isaiah prophesied about the land of Zebulon and Naphtali, places that the listeners in Israel who read in Scripture in their holy scripture that as Jesus steps on the scene, they are reminded, we've heard of the land of Naphtali and Zebulon. And so no matter how long it has been between Isaiah and now here Matthew, here's a place, here's a region, here's a prophecy about geography which matters. So when Matthew tells us that Jesus leaves Nazareth, his hometown, after all, that's where he grew up with his parents and brothers and sisters, and that he makes his home in Capernaum by the sea in the territory of Zebulon and Naphtali, we should pause and we should get out a map. And that's what I did throughout this week. And to see where the seemingly nondescript area might be. And there, look. So, map of Israel and uh, the neighboring countries and 
up there, the Sea of Galilee, that area, the two northern tribes that Jesus mentions, Zebulon and Naphtali, are part of the original 12 tribes of Israel. And each tribe received designated areas of land. And for Zebulon and Naphtali, it was in the northern part of Israel around Lake Galilee. So when Matthew mentions them, Matthew is something is doing something here that I want to call, and this is the theme of my sermon, the geography of promise. Matthew highlights what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah and which now is about to be fulfilled in the land of Zebulon, in the land of Naphtali, on the road by, by the sea, across the Jordan, in Galilee, land of the Gentiles. The people, Matthew quotes, who sat in darkness are seeing a great light that is rising for those who sat in the region and in the shadow of death. Light has dawned. It is word for word the prophecy of Isaiah and just a mention of that area of Zebulon and Naphtali and the audience of Matthew knows that now imminently in Jesus God is making good on God's promise to God's people. The geography of promise is about to take root as Jesus begins his public ministry in the land of Naphtali and Zebulon, around Lake Galilee. So as we gather in our Lord's house this Sunday in a location where God has planted community of joy, it certainly has been a week big on geography. Earlier in the week, on Monday, Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday calls to mind the history and the location of the southern part of the U.S. as the center of the civil rights movement. The inauguration of Donald Trump as the 45th president in Washington brings to the forefront the events that have taken place in that city on Friday. And the Women's March on Washington and many other cities across this country and across the world yesterday relives one of those events, the historical march, King's March on Washington in August 1963. And so I went back and, thanks to YouTube, looked and heard at King's speech there on the footsteps of the Lincoln Memorial, August 28, 1963, as Martin Luther King Jr. called for freedom in the very place where freedom had long been denied in the southern part of the U.S. And what really caught my attention are the very different locations that King brings up where he sees represented the denial of freedom. He brings up, for instance, Stone Mountain of Georgia, the Confederate Mount Rushmore, if you will. He brings up, before he says to let freedom ring from there, he suggests how freedom should ring or has rung in other locations and places. The mountains of New York, the Alleghenies of Pennsylvania, the snow-capped Rockies of Colorado, the curvaceous slopes of California. Freedom, King said, is all well and good in those places, but from every hill and molehill in Mississippi too? Yes, King says, yes, from there too, because geography matters. In the geography of promise, Jesus moves from his hometown of Nazareth to Capernaum. 
And because of John the Baptist's imprisonment, Jesus withdraws to a place that might be considered the backwaters in Galilee. From that place, really off the beaten path, Jesus begins to proclaim the kingdom of God and invites those listening to turn around, to repent, to receive his kingdom. And he then immediately begins as he walks around the shores of Lake Galilee. And as I did so a number of times during my sabbatical, there on the Lake Galilee, to read this story and the other versions of this story in Mark and Luke and John, I was profoundly touched and I continue to be so today that Jesus looks at these fishermen and looks to them for support and to be with him and he will soon be giving meaning and he will be giving substance to the nature of that what he means by the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God he does through so through his teaching his preaching his healing and what I found so fascinating as I stood there around and walked around Lake Galilee and reread this story is that in the geography of promise, our Lord, consider this, is not born in Jerusalem, the big place, but a small town in Bethlehem. In the geography of promise, our Lord leaves his hometown and he settles in Capernaum. That's hardly a place to write home about in first century Israel. And again, in the geography of promise, our Lord walks around Lake Galilee and he calls not on scholars, on rabbis and big shots. No, he calls fishermen and a tax collector, nondescript people. And he gathers his team his disciples, 12 of them, and of course, reminiscent of the 12 tribes of Israel. And I have found a beautiful picture of this setting. Look at this beautiful picture. Heike, my one of my favorite artists, and his interpretation of the calling of the disciples as they leave their nets and look at the father Zebedee back in the boat and, and waving or, or trying to catch his son's attention. Don't leave me alone. I need you. And Jesus, Jesus has their attention because in the geography of promise, when Jesus calls out, calls you and summons you, it draws an immediate response from Peter and Andrew, from James and John, that they felt called to be more than they had ever imagined and that they were. Now, I, I don't understand it. I, I don't understand it. What it was during those moments as Jesus walks around Lake Galilee and he reaches out to these fishermen. They have no idea. I don't think they do what it means to be fishers of people. But Jesus sees something in them. He sees something of value, of worth, and he sees something that he needs, that he wants them to do. They have no idea where they will go with him or what they will be doing or what they will be getting themselves into. But they do know that Jesus is calling them to be his disciples and they trust that over time the rest will become clear to you. Isn't that, isn't that our experience as witnesses, as Christ followers, when our Lord calls our name and taps you on the shoulder, we have no idea what that means, what we're getting ourselves into, but trusting that it will become clear over time. 
So in the geography of promise, what happened there in Galilee has consequences over time and place all the way to community of Joy Lutheran Church. Because in the geography of promise, 30 years ago, community of joy was started in this location. We will be celebrating this anniversary later this year in the fall. Our place here is also representative, representative of God's promise. Community of Joy Lutheran Church planted by God's leading here in the valley and through the efforts, dedicated efforts of dedicated people over the past 30 years who have joined together in prayer, in worship, in service, in support, in serving the community with their time, their talent, their resources, is another expression of the geography of promise becoming real. Community of joy is a needed expression of the, of the geography of promise. And I find it inspiring and helpful that Jesus calls disciples in pairs and sends his followers out in pairs because they needed each other. We need each other here in this place, at this font, at this table, at the foot of the cross. We come together as his beloved, as his called, strengthened in our Lord, who taps us on the shoulders. So thanks be to God for keeping and sustaining the geography of promise at Community of Joy and at many other places of worship where people gather the world over. God needs us where we are here to do our part here to keep the geography of promise that God started alive in this place, in this time. Thanks be to God for that. Amen.